Hello brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing all well. Um, today I just really want to do a commentary and just focus um, on Jesus. So if you grab your Bible or if you look at the scripture on the screen and um, we'll go through the word of God. So John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning, which means right at the start, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So this Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So we can see that the Word is with God, and the Word was in the beginning with God, and the Word is God. And we can see by the Word, in verse 3, all things were made by Him, this is the Word, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So there was no creation that existed. There was nothing at all that was made that was not made by him. So Jesus, the word, he created all things. Um, and without him, nothing was created. He is the creator. So we can go to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, we have in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And nothing was made without the Word that was made. And now we have that the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. That's... The mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Um, also God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. So the word was made flesh. Jesus Christ. And he dwelt among us. And they see and beheld his glory. As of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Now we turn to Revelation 19, verse 11. Now who is this? And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So who is this? On a white horse, and called Faithful and True. His eyes were of a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So this is Jesus returning, and his name is called the Word of God, as in John 1, in the beginning was the Word and we know that the word was made flesh. So we can see that in the beginning was the word. And we can see that the word is returning on a white horse. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now remember that by the word, there was nothing that was created or made without that word. Now, how did God create everything? Did he make it with his hands? Um, let's have a look. So verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
Now, we have the word of God, which returns on a white horse. And we have the word that was in the beginning with God, and the word was God. And there was nothing that wasn't made by that word. And in Genesis 1.3, notice what it says. And God said, do you see that speaking? God spoke. And what happens when you speak? A word comes out. Do you see that this is Jesus creating all things? God said, so God's word. Now we know who that word is. It doesn't say, and God got his hands and started building the planet. It says, and God said. So in the beginning, God spoke. God spoke and there was light. That is the word. Um, <clears throat> so we can go to Hebrews 1 3. Who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So who is referring to Jesus Christ, who is the word, and him being the brightness of his glory, that's God's, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, John, now we can see why John um, in John chapter eight, verse 58, we can now see why. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now we know that the word was before all things. In the beginning God spoke, God said. So that's a word. And we know that the word returns at the end on a white horse. And his name is called the word of God. <clears throat> so Jesus was totally right and truthful when he was speaking to I believe it was the Pharisees and Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am you see that's because Jesus has always existed now you notice in Genesis 1 or anywhere in Genesis or the Bible it does not talk about in the beginning God created the angels and all the heavenlies. It doesn't talk about that. The focus is the beginning of our time with the heaven and the earth. Um, now notice the six days of creation. You don't find any days where it says, and God made the angels. So this proves that Jesus was before the beginning because in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. The word was God. In the beginning, God said, and there was light. But this is the creation of our universe and the earth. Now, we know before this beginning, there was also the angels that were created. And obviously, Lucifer and his fallen ones um, and where God dwells. So we know that that was before us. So Jesus had no beginning or ending. And Jesus was before this beginning. So he was in his rightfully, rightfully, truthfully to say that before Abraham was, I am. <clears throat> and in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, speaking about grace that was to come to the Jews, Peter writes and says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So the prophets, they have inquired and searched diligently, and it was them, the prophets, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, speaking to the Jews who Peter is speaking to the circumcision. So they searched dig diligently. Verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. 
So we know that there was God was quiet for around 400 years until John the Baptist came and Jesus came. There was no prophets for about 400 years. And obviously the first prophet goes back from probably three and a half, four thousand 4,000 years to my knowledge to this day. So here we have the prophets who prophesied of the grace that should come. That would be in the Old Testament. And they searched diligently, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ was in them. The prophets did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So Jesus has always been. He's God manifested in the flesh. Um, he's got no beginning and he's got no ending. So um, I just wanted to, you know, hopefully that's helped somebody. You know, it's always good to read the word of God. And um, I just want to um, give you the gospel. If there's anybody that doesn't know that's listening, that it's not of works today. Um, we simply believe and trust and place our faith in Jesus Christ. And the gospel is his death, burial and resurrection. Now, you have to realize that you're a sinner and that you've offended a holy God and that you deserve judgment and that you're lost. Once you, you, you realize you're lost, you can then accept your savior, Jesus Christ. So he died on a cross for your sins and he was buried and rose again the third day for your justification. Um, so if you place your faith and trust without any works, fully Jesus in his death, burial and resurrection for your payment of sins and your justification and being made right, he will give you eternal life as a free gift, which you can never lose. So personally trust the gospel of your salvation, which is found in 1 Corinthians verses 3 and 4, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So when you believe that, then you're sealed into the day of redemption. Um, so I hope somebody, you know, I hope that I've helped somebody. Um, I just want to give a couple of verses, um, Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men by where we must be saved. Um, Acts 16.31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. We have Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.9. Who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So, um, and we have Acts 2, 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, we have Titus 2, 11 to 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. So this is what the grace of God teaches us. And it's the grace of God that saves us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I hope that's helped somebody. And uh, I hope this is edified you know, the members of the body of Christ. And, um, yeah, blessings, family.